right, everybody, this is, this is kind of the culmination, right? So we have done a, a bunch of these video sessions and, and we've covered a ton of data. Uh, I think the thing that we wanted to kind of culminate with was, was we've talked a lot about this Benton Huber trial. It was a three-year trial uh, of where they've used 401, they've used Meltdown, they've used 401 in conjunction with Meltdown, and they treat the same areas every year for three years. And we've talked in some of these other videos about how we really feel that the soil is changing. We are changing the biology of that soil. And when we do that, we change the structure and we change the feel and we change the nutrient release and all that sort of stuff. And so we thought we would do uh, one last quick one here uh, where we talk about the three-year advantages to 401 meltdown because uh, I can't stress this enough of, of anything that BW Fusion has to offer. We've got a ton of products if you look in our book. But what it really boils down to is if you're going to take a look at us, we want you to take a look at 401 Meltdown. That is the foundation of this entire company. It's the foundation of what we're going to, Bodie and I are going to hang our hat on is what's going to help you be successful. And so we look at this, we see uh, 2019, uh, the first year of the trial, uh, uh, you know, about an eight, nine bushel advantage. So seven, six, 7 7.6 bushel uh, advantage to 401 versus the over non-treated. But when we add the 401 Meltdown together, we're at about 16 bushel advantage. So right out of the gate. That was the year that was wet. It was plenty of moisture that yep. year. Now we go to 2020, if you remember from the charts we talked about on phosphorus and potassium, 2020 was the year that they were 14, 15, 16 inches behind uh, annual rainfall. And so 401 by itself still saw a two bushel advantage, but when we brought those two together, about 11 bushel. And so you remember when you saw that on the potassium side, how much more potassium was available even in those drought stricken areas. Uh, I think that is really ecstatic. And so then we go to 21, and I think parts of Iowa are fairly dry, but but realistically, Iowa had a really seems to have had a really good crop in 2021. And we saw again, we kind of get back to that what what I would consider almost normal, what 2019 was, uh, about a six bushel advantage, which is real comparable to 2019, and about a 12 and a half bushel advantage to the combination of the two. And so what we've seen in this trial is we are making a bunch of more of, of nutrients available. And that has to be what's driving some of this. We've changed the soil and we're making nutrients more available and we're bringing the yield with it. And so we've talked about, uh, you know, the, a lot of what we've talked about is how yield isn't the only factor that we're looking at, right? That's, the, that's an advantage, right? If we, if we pull back some of our nutrition dollars that we don't need to spend, and we still get more bushels at the end. I call that a cherry on top. Absolutely. And I think it also goes and, and answers the question of some of those folks that are asking, you know, if I put it on one year, I'm not going to see a response the next year, right? And as you just pointed out, three years, three positive uh, yield increases when we add 401. Mm -hmm. But when we add meltdown to 401, that topside bushel potential just seems significantly greater. Yeah. And so one last trial to look at here. This is a, this is a meltdown plus 401 trial again from 2020. Uh, this was spring applied meltdown and then V3 soil samples taken. So uh, the end result was that this was meltdown 401. It was plus five at the end of the year. So they added five bushel at the end of the year. But this Over is, just the 401, not a untreated. Okay. Over just 401. So yep. this, is, this is the addition of meltdown to 401, not an untreated. So, so that's great information. Uh, applied to bean stubble. Um, what I think is really interesting about this is we look at, we've talked about the indicator soil test. Well, yep. this is this chart is essentially most of the values from the indicator soil test kind of brought in to compare. Uh, zone one is meltdown 401, zone two in the middle uh, is the control, which was 401 earn only. And we see the end game of that. So again, HT3, 24 hour CO2 burst. This is our biological respiration. 55% increase in biological respiration when we add the meltdown to the 401. You take the vast, uh, the vast is even a little bit better. So we are aiding in soil structure. And we've talked about this. This is something that when I say we're changing the soil, a lot of that is in the structure and the ability for roots to go find nutrients. Nutrients. So about a 33% uh, change there. You know, we see, we see a 42% increase in nitrates, an 18, 17% increase in ammoniacal nitrogen. Um, the Weon, so water extractable organic nitrogen, a 10% increase. In organic N, we've talked a lot about this. This is the plant available nitrogen. We know this is happening. 
23% increase in inorganic N by utilizing meltdown with 401 over meltdown alone. Weok, that's another big one. That's a it's a it's a big. Uh, There's your changing in your soils right there. Yeah, that's the that's the water extractable carbon. Okay, this is the carbon that is is exchanging. This is the food source for biology. This is what's happening. 14% increase, a 28% increase in total estimated nitrogen release. So that could be inorganic, organic converting to inorganic. That could be into fixation. That is just a change in the amount of nitrogen that is available to the plant. We haven't even talked about phosphorus and potassium yet. So H3AP, so plant available phosphorus, an increase of 27%. A uh, uh, plant available potassium, so the H3AK increases 17%. And then we touched on calcium a little bit in one of the in one of the videos, and we hadn't changed a lot, uh, but or I said we hadn't talked about this a lot. But we see a 28% increase in calcium, and I tell you what gives this power to me, right? That I know that you did a good job when you pulled these samples is a look at the CEC value at the bottom. We're not changing CEC specifically with biology, but what I find interesting is that when you see a 29.9 versus a 30, that gives me confidence that when those samples were pooled, they were pulled from the very right areas because those two things same correlate. Depth, yeah. Same depth. Because if you change soils. in different areas and your CEC is wildly different, you know, it's no different than if you go pull grid soil samples or zone samples and you come back two or four years later to do that again. Everybody says, well, I'm going to see how my soils change. Well, if you see that and your CEC varies wildly on that sample one versus sample one, then you know you're in the wrong spot. You know something is amiss there. So CEC is a good indicator in this on, 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 on statistical similarity, so to speak. So to kind of put a bow on this, and this has been fun. We'll probably have to do this again. I've enjoyed it. I don't know if they're going to enjoy it, but <laughs> I have had fun. At the core of Biodyne, we aren't about single-strain biological products. We focus on the team and the diversity. We don't focus on just one nutrient, we focus on an array. With all the noise in the marketplace and the cost of commercial fertilizer, you must ask yourself, do you want a biological product only focused on nitrogen? Or one that covers nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur? We talked about calcium, talked about boron, have seen improvements in zinc. I think that's the real question here is when we talk about the economics and we've hit on it is we've shown the yield data but we've also shown the nutrient efficiency data and in a time where the supply chain seems broken we don't know whether we can even get a price for mm -hmm. nitrogen we right. don't know whether we're gonna get the products that we need you know it, if you're looking at a biological product that does a multitude of things versus one that is just you know focused on one, ask yourself, is that the best spend of my dollars? Um, and I know for me, and, and again, for, for my farm and my operation, if I can spend $20 and have a product that helps make nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium and sulfur, zinc, calcium, and boron more efficient, more available, I know where my dollars mm -hmm. are getting spent. I look at it, you know, I, I agree with you 100%. And nitrogen is, like I said, it's kind of the holy grail. It's the one we want to talk about. I think we have a, a product that brings some nitrogen, but it takes looks at phosphorus, potassium, everything else, and then we bring the indicator in, and, and we can make that in-season nitrogen decision. If we're going to side dress, we talked about it early, how our plan was if, if that fits our logistics, that, that your particular soil is one that a side dress application kind of fits. Well, now not only can I make the determination that we should side dress, but now I can use that data to kind of determine how much to side dress, what we need to do to be most efficient with that nitrogen dollar as well. And, and at the end of the day, to wrap it all up, you know, Sean started it off with, with people, proof, and products. And, and it's as true today as it was when we started BW. Um, you know, I hope that uh, if you're curious, reach out to Sean on Twitter. Um, my, my Twitter handle is at bkitch one Bodie. Um, you can also follow us at, uh, at BW Fusion, uh, at Biodyne Agronomy. Sean, I'll let you give your Twitter handle. I'm Sean, S-E-A-N underscore Nettleton, N-E-T-T-L-E-T-O-N. So at Sean underscore Nettleton on Twitter. And if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to check us out online, uh, www.biodyne-usa.com or www.bw-fusion.com. Uh, or feel free to call any one of our phone numbers, reach out to any one of our reps. Uh, thanks again for tuning in.